Thank you. This is our 50th call. And I guess nearly a year ago, I was actually in New York, and uh, we thought about doing a call on Saturday mornings, our millionaire mentorship calls, and, um, you know, we started to take action on it, and each and every week it kept growing and growing and growing, and then we added the uh, video part. Uh, those of you who are watching live right now on our www.lifeskilltv, that's www.life, L-I-F-E-S-K-I-L-L-T-V.com, and I see people are signing in on that. And uh, each week that we've done it, it's really been a blessing to me because it keeps me uh, in that consistent pattern. You know, uh, life is really about rhythms, and you can create success rhythms by doing the right things at the right time each and every time, or you can create failure rhythms by doing just the opposite. Actually, you don't even have to do the opposite. One thing out of line can take you completely off track. You know, when it's very interesting when, when, when an architect is drawing a plan to build a building, uh, one measurement, you know, can be one-tenth of an inch out of line, and by the time the building is built, that tenth uh, magnifies to a wall being a whole foot out of line. And so it's all about the little things that make a difference in our, in our, in our growth and in our lives. Uh, those of you who have some noise in the background, if you press star six, you will mute yourself out because if you can hear it, we can hear it. And then when you want to speak, you can press star six again to unmute yourself. Uh, since we are doing the video and people are tuning in now, uh, let me, uh, I'll tell you, let me star five the line for now. And, and, and then we'll go on and uh, share our lesson for the day and then we can have some discussion afterwards. The uh, the lesson for today is uh, this is class number fifty in a year series of millionaire mentorship classes, and one of the things that uh, I find in creating this rhythm, this weekly rhythm, is that it has truly helped me a lot to do what must be done, and I'm sure that it will help those of you who participated. The one thing that we've all known and understood and agreed that at 8 o'clock Eastern, we were going to be connected by, the, the, um, by the, the miracle of electronics, by telephone and by internet, to share each other and to share messages. So, so the topic for today is restarting your business. And I think that those of us who are in the industry, in the network marketing industry, and really in any industry, you know, there comes a point where um, things are not going exactly the way you want them to go. And as a result, you think about restarting. What do I have to do to crank it up again? What do I have to do to make it fly again? And I think one of the key things is to, to really give yourself a hand, a, a pat on the back, because you wouldn't want to restart something that wasn't working. So simply having the thought of let me restart my business, let me restart my project, means that there was a time when it was really going good for you. And so let us just remember that time, that there was a time that, that the business was growing and blowing and that the things you wanted to happen were really happening. So uh, those who uh, don't want to restart their business are, are no longer on the playing field. And, and, you know, they've, uh, you know, fallen by the wayside. So we are still among the living, and among the living you find the successful. So when we look at that, we know, we know that we've had success, but we know that it's not growing the way we want it to grow. And I guess, frankly, we're just stuck. And that's not a bad thing. You know, when you go up a step, if you notice, each step is flat. The incline may be steep, but each step is flat. And so as you uh, pro progress along your success journey, you go from step to step. And at each step, 
there's a new lesson to be learned because the higher you go up the path, the more you can see, the further you can see. And so this whole process of restarting is how do I get unstuck? How do I, how do I rekindle my business? How do I make it fly again? And when I thought about this, I thought of, you know, your business is like a marriage. And, you know, when, you, when you've been married and, and, and things are going bad with the marriage or there are problems and, or, you know, as they say, the feeling is gone. You know, it's, it's not like it used to be. Uh, you know, if you have a commitment to the marriage, you know, when that happens, a lot of folks just walk away and quit and get a divorce. And the divorce rate reflects that, you know, I guess, lack of commitment. But it's very similar in your business. You know, when you get stuck, when you get to a point where your expectations are not being met, uh, you can walk away. You can get a divorce and it's done. <laughs> but if you don't walk away, it, you, the reason you go to a marriage counselor is because you believe in the marriage. You made the decision years before maybe and things have gone a little off track and you say, what do I have to do to get back on track? And so when you, you go into a marriage counselor, but the, the first principle there is that you want to do it. You want to continue. You want the marriage to survive. You want the business to survive. And that is very powerful because many times when our expectations are not met, we lose sight of the vision and we give up on the dream. And so those who walk away from a marriage have given up on the possibility of a meaningful relationship, you know, nurturing relationship. And in our business, those of us who walk away from the business have, have given up on the dream and, and our why. And we've said, it doesn't matter. Or maybe we were just joking. You know, I used to often, when people would say, well, this is what I want to do. This is my dream. And I, I'd say to them, you know, are you serious or are you just kidding around? And it's amazing how many people say, I'm just kidding around. I, I really don't have a dream. But folks, if you have a dream and you go into that marriage counselor to, to restart your business, you know first that your business has given you some success in the past and you want it to be better. You want to rekindle that. And so the first thing the marriage counselor generally says is don't come in with a blame level of, attitude, uh, level of consciousness. Don't start, and in our business, if we're stuck, don't start blaming our upline or blaming our downline or blaming the other person. You know, when a, when a marriage counselor sits down on the first couple of sessions, a part of those sessions are that each person is sort of blaming the other person for the failure of the marriage. And in our business, when you sit down with yourself and in our business, uh, the marriage counselor might be you. Okay, you have to counsel yourself. Sometimes you may have a, an upline or a mentor or a sponsor who can counsel you. But the idea is first, blame will not get it. Get away from the blame game. You know? And realize really that the, the, the only variable that, 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 let's say the only constant variable in the relationship is you. And so if things are not going the way, way you want them to go, if you're stuck, and it wasn't that way at the beginning, you were going and blowing, then things have changed because you have changed. You know, at the beginning of the marriage, everything is hot and working and, you know, you feel good. You can't wait to get home and see your wife or your husband. And, oh, my goodness, you know, it, it doesn't get much better than that. And so in our business, let's do the same thing. What was it? At the beginning, they gave you that feeling, that, that exhilaration, that desire to do better, to, to get up and to make another call. What was it that made you go out with just radiant energy and talk to people? You know, nobody was safe, you know. <laughs> what did you feel when you did that? What was your vision? You know, when you, when you were going out talking to new people, your vision was they were all going to join you in your business. And they used to say, go for the no, you know. I mean, you went for the no, you went for the yes, you went for the dream. So what did you do then that you're not doing now? Well, let's look at this. Now that we've had some success, most of us, uh, you know, we, we have a group. Okay? We have people that we put in the business. And our first reaction is to sort of say, well, they aren't doing anything, you know. They're not doing what you want them to do. Well, one reason we get stuck is we move from the recruiting mode 
to the management mode. You know, we start to talk about instead of recruiting and radiating, we start to manage other people's dreams and hopes. When we bring a person into the business, we have them do their why, and we get committed to help them achieve their why. We get committed to management and training, you know, because we say that uh, this is our business. We're in the, the business of training people to become successful. Well, I, I guess the thought emerges, if you are doing all this managing and training, why are you stuck? <laughs> well, you're stuck because you stopped doing the things that made you successful. And when I say you, I'm not. Me too. So maybe I need to rephrase that. We get stuck. Because we stopped doing the things that made us successful. In the beginning, we were talking to everyone, and now, all of a sudden, we become managers. You know, we start, uh, uh, you, you know, it's very funny. As you have some success uh, in a meeting, for example, you recruit some people, and you, you start going to your weekly meetings, and in your mind, you start saying, you know, well, let me be available to help my team, you know. I'll be available to help uh, close their prospects, help get their prospects' questions answered, especially the new people. Yeah. And uh, lo and behold, the curious thing about this business is that people do what they see you do rather than what you say do. So you can stand in training all day and say, you got to bring guests to the meeting, you got to bring guests to the meeting. And, I'm here doing the meeting, and one of you is doing the meeting, and I'm available to help you with your guests. But your people will subconsciously follow you, and eventually, and I've seen it happen. I was at a meeting recently where they had 35 distributors and not a single guest. Every distributor was, was there waiting to help their downline answer their guest questions, but there were no guests. And so that says that you know, people do what they see you do. And then, you know, you get a compound situation when you, when you, you, you realize that, uh, you know, there are no guests and when there are no guests, your business is not going to grow. That's a good indication. It can impact your belief level, you know. And you start to wonder. You start to doubt. You know, uh, the master teacher said, you know, if you tell this mountain, to be cast into the sea and doubt not, it's going into the sea. And the symbolism there is that no matter how impossible a task may seem, if you believe with total conviction and doubt not that you can accomplish it, it will be done. Now that path, that, uh, that, that uh, goal may have a cycle, you know, uh, you can plant seeds of corn and no matter how motivated you are, no matter how strong your desire is, that corn is not going to grow uh, in a week, but in a few months it'll be there. So, but the idea is that your belief has to be total. And as you get stuck, you begin to doubt the business and doubt yourself. And then that doubt radiates to your team and it becomes a, almost an unspoken prophecy being fulfilled. We get so involved with helping other people achieve our, their dreams, we forget our own. And then eventually, we often become doubtful that maybe we're not doing it right. Maybe it doesn't work. You know, one of the reasons that we go to these big events, I'm right now in, uh, in Iowa doing a premier school, and one of the reasons we have these big events is that for you to come back and plug in and, and, and revalidate the business and get yourself excited all over again. And so those of us who are stuck, and I'm among the stuck, <laughs> okay, we must unstuck ourselves or unstick ourselves by really recreating the passion that we had in the beginning to, to, to start like new. You know, we used to say ignorance on fire is better than knowledge on ice. When you didn't know that much and all you were was excited about doing the business and you were telling and touching everybody, you had success. But now that you know how to do it and you can explain everything, each and every aspect of the marketing plan, etc., you're stuck. So let's start over like new. Let's start to radiate that excitement we had at the very beginning. Let's go out and, you know, 
every one of our leaders tells us, whenever you start, go sponsor new people. It sounds okay, but really and truly, that's really what it's about. How do you sponsor new people? By recreating the vision and the passion that you had when you started. You sponsor new people by going out and meeting new people and, and developing your contacts. But now the beauty is, after having been through this cycle of, you might say, success and then uh, uh, then just uh, mediocrity, not mediocrity, but just experience great success and then now you're stuck, is that you are a lot smarter. You know a lot more. But now the essence is to keep that excitement and passion radiating. But now when you bring a person in to use your knowledge now, you commit to train those who want to be trained. You commit to, you want people now to meet you halfway. What you're realizing is, you know, they're eagles and turkeys. They're, they're, they're people, eagles who want to fly, and they're turkeys who can't fly. Right? But then you have a little confusion. There you'll have turkeys in eagle outfits with eagle beanies and eagle glasses, and who will come to all the meetings and make all the eagle moves, but they're not going to fly. Similarly, you have uh, eagles in turkey clothing. They've been surrounded by turkeys, raised by turkeys, and so they think they're turkeys. And when they come to a meeting, they'll hear something, and something inside begins to like speak a little, speak to them a little heartbeat. Uh -huh. Your job now that you've been in the business a while is to kind of recognize the two, to see who are the turkeys. And nothing bad about turkeys. A turkey's only going to fly as high or go as high as they desire and they believe themselves capable of going. I mean, there are people, there are great stories of salespeople who had, who generated $50,000 a month in a, in a very poor, you know, uh, you might say a, a, a bad district. And when his sales manager uh, said, wow, you're doing a great job and promoted him and gave him a much more lucrative area, he still did 50000 a month. I said, well, what's wrong? Well, that was it. He had a $50,000 a month consciousness. And as we begin to move to the next level, we have to recognize that everybody's different. They're eagles, they're turkeys, we love them all, but we have to be able to separate the two to learn how to apply our knowledge to get desired results. We, we want to really use our experience now to shorten their learning curve. So once you know that a person is, is really an eagle, and how do you know that? The eagles will follow directions. You know, you can make excuses or progress, you can't do both. The turkeys will often start by excuses. They can't come today, got this to do. They won't do their list, okay? Oh, they've already been to the training. I already heard that one time. The eagles will make their list. They'll be at every training. They'll be at every meeting. And so you begin to recognize the difference between turkeys and eagles. You want to put your time into the people who want it as badly or more than you do. Keep recruiting people because it's really a sorting and sifting process. You can never, as they say, you can never tell a book by its cover. Sometimes you can tell an eagle by their outside appearance, but often you can't. Sometimes you can tell an eagle by their profession, but often you can't. And so what you have to do is to keep recruiting and keep sorting and sifting. Treat everybody the same to present the opportunity basically to them and let them reach for it. One reason we get stuck is we keep trying to push a rope. We keep trying to bring people into the business who really don't have a dream and really don't want to do it. They just do it because they like us. They sign up, they like us, fine. But you want people who have a dream and have a burning desire and then you can use your experience to help move that desire, but you have to sift through the numbers to find those with the burning desire. As Bill Britt said, the secret to his success in becoming a multimillionaire was that he showed the plan. He did 1,200 presentations. And of the 1,200 people he showed the plan to, 900 people said no. 300 said yes. So that's 25% will probably do your business. And of the 300 that said yes, he said 85 got busy. And so 85 people did enough to stay in the game. They come to the meetings. They, they sponsor a couple of folks, and they're just having a good time. He said, of those 85, 35 people got serious. And these are the folks who rise up to the mid-levels or the lower 
elite levels in our company or whatever company they'll be in, and then they'll get stuck there. And that's where many of us are stuck there and with those particular levels. But then he said, of those 35 who got serious, 11 people made him a millionaire. So that's 11 out of 1,200. That's what, one out of 100? <coughs> and so how do you find that, that 11? By sorting and sifting through 1,200 people. You know, folks, we don't make diamonds. We find diamonds. We find diamonds in the grocery store, we find diamonds everywhere. If we're always in the prospecting mode, we will always find diamonds. But if we're in the management mode, we won't. So we don't make diamonds, we find them, and, and we polish the diamonds through training and leadership. And that's why I said our experience now is more effective as we recruit more people and sort and sift through to find those who really want to do it. And now we are prepared and capable of showing them how. In the beginning, I'm sure we probably blew off uh, some really good people because we didn't know what we were doing. We were just ignorance on fire. And you may want to revisit those people and tell them, you know, you, you may want to fess up. You know, when I talked to you first about this opportunity, I didn't know what I was doing. I said all the wrong things. But let me tell you, this thing is so incredible, so powerful, that I have to come back and share it with you again now that I know better. You can still say no and I'll still love you, but I'll just feel better inside if you, let, if you hear me once again now that I know what I'm doing. So let's, in conclusion, let's stop blaming and start claiming. Stop blaming, start claiming your success. Number two, say less to more people. You know, let your knowledge and experience come out through action rather than words. Three, stay in the prospecting and recruiting, recruiting mode. We are great diamond hunters, and diamond hunters always hunt. When a diamond hunter stops hunting, he's no longer a diamond hunter. And he settles in his comfort zone. So we're great diamond hunters. My recommendation, sponsor three people a month for the next six months. You go through, that would give you 18 new people. And you figure one out of the 18 might be that real diamond. You won't know that if you only sponsor two between now and the end of the year. So set yourself into a success rhythm where you put forth more effort and put enough people, do enough sorting and sifting and have enough people to sort and sift through that the law of numbers and values can work for you. And I say sponsor three people a month for the next six months and you will be unstuck. And then finally, help, help the people make money in their first 30 days. You know, when people step out on faith, Think about this. We've, we're bringing people into our industry who've been in a comfort zone or who failed before. And so in their subconscious mind, they've already set themselves up for failure because it hasn't worked in the past, because their friends didn't make any money in the past. And so if you can validate this business opportunity quickly, and money validates, okay? Money doesn't solve all your problems, but it sure validates your efforts. And so if you can help a new person make money in the first 30 days, even if you can just get them five preferred customers in the first 30 days, they'll make themselves, what, about 60 bucks? I had a friend who was so excited. He said, look, I've been in network marketing 10 years, and I've never gotten a check with my name on it. If you can help a person make money in the first 30 days, help them and sponsor one or two people. And really, <clears throat> what I'm working on now, I'm trying to get my eagles together is that once my goal is to help them sponsor three people a month, do what I'm doing. I'm working to sponsor three a month, so you do what I'm doing. You sponsor three a month. When you put them on that rhythm, it'll become real clear in a short time who are the eagles and who are the turkeys. And so finally, folks, teach them how to fly and then kick them out of the nest. One thing we've learned over the last years is that we can't carry people over the finish line. We can lead them over the finish line, but they got to run on their own. Teach them how to fly and teach by showing. People do what we do, not what we say. 
So if we say you need to have guests out to a meeting, every meeting you should show up with one guest, we should show up with one guest. Let's create that model for them. If we tell them that uh, at the end of the month you get your guests, you've got people in your pipeline and you go on and you, you close them out, you follow it with one-on-ones, you, 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 in the, in the two-minute drill you put in more energy at the end of the month okay, to close things out and you put in more energy at the beginning of the month to have somebody to close. And when they see you do it, they'll do it. If your business is going to get better, you must get better. And how do you get better? You get better by being better. The experience we have in the business now shows us how to be better. One of our great leaders said that, you know, how do you bring one of the top people to your market to speak and train your people? They're real busy. They're hard to get. She said, hey, be a top person yourself. You may not have it in the numbers, but be it in your mind. Make yourself the expert you need to get the things that you want. Refocus on your why. Refocus on your dream and commit yourself to do whatever it takes for as long as it takes for you to live your dream. And when you do that, you will have restarted your business and taken it to a whole nother level. Let's fly together. Let's get it done. All right. All right, folks, let me...